being uh, with you on this event. So I'm Derek Walker, I'm Chief Executive of the Wales Cooperative Centre. We're a, normally we're an organisation um, that does a variety of different things. Um, but today um, we're involved because we deliver and run Welsh Government's Digital Communities Wales programme, which is a, a large scale digital inclusion uh, programme in Wales, which I'll talk a bit more about later on. Um, but we're really pleased to be working with uh, the National Pensioners Convention in Wales and Age Cymru to put on uh, this event today. So good to see you all. We have more people signed up, so I expect people will be joining as the event progresses. I don't know how you find these online events, but what we find is far more people sign up than actually turn up. It's easy to sign up and then often people um, can't attend at the last minute. So we'll have people drop in and out, um, but that's fine. Um, I think the intention is to make this as interactive as we possibly can. So there are times, um, not during the talks, but after each talk where there are opportunities to ask questions just for five minutes. Now we can do that in, in by putting questions in the chat. So there's a chat uh, function at the bottom of your screen and you can type in any questions at any point in there and we will pick them up and ask them of the speakers. Um, and if you'd rather ask your question at the appropriate time, um, the chair, whether that's me or the other Derek, will invite you to ask your question um, of the speaker. I think that's it, it in terms of, uh, of housekeeping. I don't think uh, Derek Roberts has joined us yet, has he, Catherine? I can't see. I am now, yes. Oh, you're there. Great, Derek. Over I'm to you. I, I've got there in your bit, so over to you, Derek. Good morning, or about an Good morning. I'm, I'm sorry about that, but my um, my cat decided to uh, destroy my computer setup. I had to reboot re the whole thing. Good morning. I, I'm Derek Roberts. I'm chair of NPC Wales, which is the Welsh regional body affiliated to UK uh, NPC. We've got about 40 organisations affiliated to us, and they, they vary in size from large trades unions, uh, retired members organisations, 50 plus groups, and some local support groups. Uh, we regularly meet, um, we're supported by Age Cymru, we meet obviously we're often with the old, Older People's Commissioner and Welsh Government. Now on the 1st of February, NPC launched the Connections for All campaign with a very successful webinar event. And one of the lead speakers on that was in fact Hella Hercox, the uh, People's Commissioner. Figures that came out from that show that over 77% of over 70s do have low digital engagement and over 75 people, quite a lot of them don't use the internet at all through lack of access, skills or confidence. So they looked at they looked at some of the issues around that. And in a way, what we're going to do today is explore what's what's happening in Wales, because there is um, a, a different situation in Wales, I think. Now, today is Safer Internet Day. So our focus today is on um, safer connections in Wales, keeping people safely connected online. As it happens also, I am a digital communities champion and I've supported some of our older members in my own trade union, Unite Retired Members, to get online and so on. But anyway, today's webinar is hosted by NPC Wales, Age Cymru and Digital Communities Wales. And many thanks to them for, for supporting the event. I hope you all find it interesting today. Unfortunately, the minister who was going to come is unable to come because um, somebody's thrown a spanner in the electoral works, I think, and they're They've got an urgent meeting in the Senate about the uh, elections coming up in May. However, I would allow, allow to introduce our first speaker, who is Derek Walker. He's the Chief Executive Officer of the Wales Co-op Centre. Over to you, Derek. Thank you, Derek. Um, good morning, everybody. Boradar, nice to see you. Um, as I say, I'm Chief Executive of the Wales Cooperative Centre, and we deliver uh, the Digital Communities Wales programme in Wales, which is a large scale digital inclusion initiative. I think it's probably um, one of the largest interventions of its type across the UK and I'll talk a bit more about um, the work of the programme a, a little later on. Um, I think it's really timely that we're here for Safer Internet Day. Um, what we found at the Wales Cooperative Centre and through our work in digital inclusion is that there are increasing attempts um, online 
um, to make people unsafe. And, you know, particularly during the pandemic, I've noticed it personally, and I'm sure many of you will have done as well, um, people trying to trick you and um, um, undertake fraudulent activity online, uh, more so now than ever before. Um, you know, I like to think that I know my way around the internet and I'm pretty confident, but nonetheless, not so long ago, I was tricked into giving my password away and had to change all my passwords. I've got a good friend who um, who was tricked by that awful um, email pretending to be from the NHS asking people to um, give away their bank account details in order to access uh, the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, all fraudulent, covered on the on the on the BBC and elsewhere, but nonetheless, um, you know, many people fall for it because they are very convincing. So, really important that we're here today to talk about um, 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 being safe online. What I was going to start the session with, with was a bit of an overview of um, digital inclusion in Wales, in particular, or digital exclusion in Wales. Um, in March last year, uh, the BBC asked the question, what if the COVID-19 pandemic had happened back in 2005? And I thought, you know, what an interesting question that is. That was a time before uh, many of us were using the internet, before smartphones, before social media, before many of the digital tools that we take for granted today um, to keep us connected uh, were available. And there's no doubt about it, for many people, um, the internet has been really helpful in staying connected, in buying goods and groceries, in getting information uh, during the pandemic. The benefits have been uh, really significant for, for many of us. But for many others, and far too many others, um, they're still not able to access those benefits particularly older people, uh, but not just older people. We know, for example, uh, you know, younger people without equipment, uh, digital devices and so forth, often haven't been able to access um, online learning uh, during the pandemic. People not being able to have video consultations with their GPs because they don't have the right connectivity. So it's a particular issue for older people, but it's not just an issue for older people. Um, as Derek was saying, um, the st statistics are still quite significant. So in the last national survey of Wales, 10% of people still are not using the internet. Well, that was, you know, that's a big improvement from 2012-13 when the figure was 23%. Um, but it's still far from where we need to be if we're going to be a properly digital inclusive nation. And so if you break those figures down, you'll see that um, older people and perhaps those most vulnerable to COVID-19 um, are those that are most likely to be excluded. So 41% of those over 75 don't use the internet, 19% of those 65 to 74 don't use the internet. Um, but as I say, other groups are equally affected, so, you know, are also affected. So 19% of disabled people, one in five disabled people, are not able to use the internet. And nearly one in five of people living in social housing are not using the internet. And this is important, not, not just because of the usual stuff, you know, perhaps making it easier to buy things online. Um, making it uh, uh, cheaper to buy, th you know, buy things that you might not. Um, might pay more for otherwise, being able to switch providers. So important for all those reasons, but it's increasingly important um, because of health benefits. So people accessing inf information about health, about COVID-19 in particular at the moment, of course, but uh, providing information about health and services that are available. Many of us are doing that now online. So nearly 90% of people in the younger age group, 16 to 29 year olds, are using internet to access health information. Um, but that's just a quarter of people 70 and over. And as Derek was saying earlier, there are many reasons why people are not using the internet. Um, sometimes it's about skills, which is a focus for the work that we do in my organization. 
Um, sometimes it's around cost, cost of equipment, cost of broadband. Um, it can be around connectivity. You know, still, particularly in rural areas, we don't have good enough connectivity for people to be able to use the internet effectively. Um, but it's, you know, as I say, it's also about skills. It's also about motivation. Some people not wanting uh, to um, get involved. So in ordinary times, this would be a sad situation. I think it would be a heartbreaking situation that so many people are being excluded from the opportunities provided by the internet. Um, but during this time, when we are stuck in our homes, um, the digital divide, in my view, is completely unacceptable. And all of us need to be able to transact, to communicate and to get information online. So what is being done about it? Um, well, as I mentioned, we are lucky in Wales to have Digital Communities Wales um, as a programme which is supporting digital access. It's been running for a number of years and it will run uh, for a number of years to come, funded by the Welsh Government with a focus on improving people's digital skills. And it has uh, a number of different components to it. And I would encourage you to have a look on the Digital Communities Wales website. So for example, there is lots of information and resources on there for, for you, but also for the people that you might be working with um, about doing you know, very simple things online. So we have information and resources and videos about how to use WhatsApp, how to use, um, uh, you know, how to stay safe online, how to keep, keep digital equipment safe. There are also groups of information on themes which, which are grouped together in, on something called Padlets, um, on things like education and again, staying safe online. So really have a look around that website if you're interested. There's lots of information and resources available. We also deliver um, online training programmes and these training programmes are available for people who've never used the internet before. They perhaps might need support to, to some support to get on those programmes, but very basic online training programmes to enable people to get familiar with using the internet. Uh, they've been prepared by an organisation called the Good Things Foundation. They're free to use and um, they can be very helpful for friends and family members who need the very basics of using the internet. A large part of what we do is we support organisations to help the people that they work with. So rather than working with people directly, which is increasingly difficult in these times, we support organisations, public sector organisations often, to think about putting in place a digital inclusion action plan and thinking about how they can work with their customers and their clients um, to uh, enable them to access services and goods and, and, and information online. We train the staff of those organizations to work with their customers and it works as a sort of train the trainer uh, approach whereby they can then work with their customers and clients. We also provide kits, so we have kit boxes, equipment boxes of iPads and all sorts of goods and paraphernalia to encourage and act as a catalyst for activities. And those are, you know, in normal times, they're particularly good at stimulating and engaging people in um, digital inclusion activities. Um, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a familiar term, but if you can find something that interests people, you know, whether it's connecting with family and friends elsewhere or buying stuff online, then, you know, the, they, then they will be more willing to use the technology to do that. It's not the technology in itself that's usually of interest. It's what the technology can help people to do. So the kit provides a stimulus for that type of thing. We've been really busy actually during the last few months helping care homes in particular. So my colleagues have supported the distribution of over 1000 iPads and tablet computers to care homes and supporting these care homes to have broadband access too, so that people in care homes during the pandemic have been able to have a consultation with their doctor or speak to family and friends that they're no longer able to see. And that has been funded by the Welsh Government. Um, really important work during this time. Um, and 
um, probably happening to a greater extent here in Wales than it is elsewhere in the UK. You know, there are lots more different things that we do through the Digital Communities Wales programme, but one of the things that I most like in normal times is a what we call an inter intergenerational activity. So we work with young people often in schools from the ages of seven upwards to support them to understand how they might help older people in particular to use digital equipment. So they get learning and they learn how to share and to help others. They often might get a qualification or certificate and then they will um, perhaps go into a care home, you know, in normal times and support older people to use an iPad and um, connect online. And in return, they will have conversations with the older people and they'll often hear more about their, uh, their, you know, about history, about the local community, about the life of those older people and build up those friendships. So it's a fantastic initiative, which we've, which we've um, exported, you'll be pleased to say, to other parts of the UK called Digital Heroes. And it really is a great way to encourage um, more people to use the internet. So, you know, we're, we're tremendously lucky to have the Digital Communities Wales programme here in Wales. It really is having a big impact. In the past, going back a few years, if you'd looked at Wales, we would have been had the higher number of people that are digitally excluded because we've got an older population in general. Uh, but now we've certainly caught up because of these sorts of activities. And often you will see Wales ahead in certain areas in terms of digital inclusion than other regions of the UK, which is great to see. Lots to do, nothing to be complacent about, but good progress being made. Before I end, I just wanted to flag up uh, a new campaign that's being launched um, called Digital Cam Companions. I, I think Derek mentioned that you were a, a digital companion. So we are going to be um, running some ads, adverts on TV, on ITV, on Facebook, in the local press to encourage people to become digital companions and to support friends and family um, who are not using the internet to do so. So it's quite an informal campaign. We're not asking people to sign up. We're not asking people to formally act as volunteers, but we are giving them advice and support and encouragement to support people perhaps who are in their bubble, um, who they can safely um, support online um, to get online and to, um, to be using the internet more actively than they have previously. You know, in normal times, we'd be doing this in community centres, we'd be doing this kind of work in libraries, um, we do, we, we'd be going to where people are to support them and um, to improve their skills. But in these times, I think the best way to do that is by in, encouraging and supporting family members and friends who can support older people safely to become um, digital companions. So watch out for this campaign. We're hoping for a big splash, uh, lots of publicity around it. And we're delighted to be working with the Office of the Older Persons Commissioner, Age Cymru, and with, uh, again, the good support of Welsh Government to make this happen. You can find more information about that on our website, Digital Communities Wales. If you just Google that, you'll, you'll find all the information you need. So, you know, that's it for me. I'm, you know, really pleased to be working with the National Pensioners Convention. You know, thank you for the work that you're doing. I was at the NPC meeting back in Blackpool a couple of years ago. I know um, Jenny in particular and others have been driving work within the convention um, to, to promote digital inclusion. I think there was a, a motion back there two years ago, um, which is now leading to all this activity within the NPC. So we're really delighted to see that happen and so pleased that to be working with you to support older people online. So thank you very much, Derek, and uh, looking forward to the rest of the event. Thank you. A, a couple of um, questions have come up in the chat. Uh, in the meantime, I suppose it's quite interesting. I might ask Jenny to comment on one of them, because one of them's about, um, how to, what about local newspapers, which are, you know, we don't have much of a media presence in Wales. And perhaps Jenny can comment on that when she, when she has her little session, because she's a member of the NUJ. Um, Issues mem members that have raised on the panel are things like, um, well, the, how do we deal with the anti-scammers? And um, certainly in NPC Wales, we had another issue, which is 
the reluctance of some communities to, to get vaccinated and how do we deal with that kind of information problem and is there a general problem of information overload that, that puts people off um our, our experience generally has been that equipment generally is okay because it's, it's it, it is becoming more user friendly but the, the, there may be some people who are you know frightened of the actual kit itself but um I don't know whether you want to comment on any of those at this stage, Derek, but um, those are some of the comments that came through. Yeah, I, sorry, I didn't see the comments directly, but um, yeah, I, on the on the scamming issue, I, 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 we, we do have advice and information about that, so we can share that um, after the, the event. I'll ask my colleagues to do that. Um, for me, you know, you know, the, the overriding thing is just to be aware, you know, we're all vulnerable to it, you know, uh, however familiar we are to the internet. And it's just um, being aware of that anytime you're being asked to give, you know, finan financial and information and passwords, you know, just check that that's to a legitimate source. And if in doubt, don't share that information because that can give people uh, a huge amount of access. Um, what I often do is, I look at the email address and so you know the email address might be might look normal and then you click on the email address and then you realize it's a big long number or something very odd and then you realize it's a scam but um just you know the, the only you know um you know the, there's not a foolproof way of doing this because there are lots of different ways in which we try to get people try to fool us and it's increasing uh, but being aware of the source of the information you've got and if in doubt just double check before giving away any information um you know on the on the sort of information overload stuff i think that is that is an issue we do get a lot of information don't we coming through um especially emails and so forth um you know difficult to to do much about that what i try to do is limit the number of emails i receive so once you're on a mailing list you can always subs unsubscribe from those mailing lists to reduce the number of emails that you get and they'll easily put you on but they are now it's much more easy to get off those kind of um, bits of um, um, emails and so forth um, but you know I guess what I'd say is there's help out there you know do come and speak to us at Digital Communities Wales and we'd be really pleased to support people and organisations where we can um, with advice. Thank you for that. Yeah, and somebody's pointed out also scammers use the telephone a lot, and um, there are various call blockers you could use to, to help with that as well. Mm -hmm. Somebody's also raised the obvious question, and perhaps when um, uh, Glyn Jones does his bit on it from the Welsh government's perspective, about you know, well, we've got some um, broadband desert spots in Wales. I mean, not everybody's got, got access to a broadband si band signal. We, we are a bit of a rural place, and we're we're a bit spotty. But um, perhaps the Welsh yeah. government can comment on that when they, when they come to, to their session. I think they will because they, they are, they, the increasingly technology is enabling that it's much more easy you don't have to put pipes under uh, you know under the ground so much to access communities and I would flag one thing I would flag up and I'm sure Glyn will flag this up later Welsh governments have a local broadband fund and they are is you know they, I think it's going into the second round is just closed the third round is going to reopen We've got an event coming up, I think, at the beginning of March on this, and it's encouraging, it's funding for local groups who want to put broadband access to their rural communities. So it will be advice on how you do it and then funding to enable you to do it. And, you know, they really want to see more applications. It's not an easy process. You have to get the community involved. And, you know, it's, um, you know, it's a, a significant amount of work. I'm not underestimating that. But there is financial support to make that happen. And, Welsh Government are looking for applications so if you're interested in that in your community do get in touch with us or with Welsh Government directly. Okay thank you very much. Uh, we'll, we'll move now to our second speaker who is um, George Jones from the Older People's Commissioner's Office. Uh, George good morning would you like to uh, introduce yourself? Good morning Borada. Um, yes I'm as Derek has uh, indicated I'm George Jones and I'm a Community Services and Inclusion Lead at the Commissioner's Office and I'm standing in for Helena today because she wasn't able to make it. Uh, I hope I do you justice. Um, <clears throat> I've been asked to, to speak about Helena's uh, latest report of Leave No One Behind. And uh, just to put it in context, uh, the whole team left the office in March 2020 
not knowing that we would still be out of the office nearly a year later. Uh, so during um, the first few, the first months of lockdown, uh, we had to reassess how uh, the commissioner would, would be able to reach out and engage with all the people and groups of all the people. Um, and we utilised our, our networks and our contacts out in the various parts of Wales, the 50 plus forums and the agencies that work with and for all the people. And we set up a, a series of engagement events, uh, north, south, east, west, and everywhere in between, um, which was uh, a fascinating experience, um, engaging with uh, all the people who were online. And as I mentioned, other agencies who work with and support all the people across Wales. And we heard from them about the challenges that they were facing during that first lockdown, uh, what what had and hadn't worked. Um, and we heard people's stories and experiences. Uh, some of them were very harrowing and some of them very uh, enlightening and entertaining. Uh, so as a result of that series of engagements, uh, we published our report in August 2000, August last year, 2020, um, Leave No One Behind. And um, the, the findings within that relevant to this webinar today was our findings on digital engagement, digital inclusion and digital exclusion. And as has been uh, intimated already, uh, a number of issues uh, were discussed with us uh, around digital exclusion, uh, mainly around the, the, the barriers that older people found to getting digitally active. Um, lack of digital skills or perceived lack of digital skills, uh, lack of confidence in wanting to get online and feeling safe online. Um, and then there are other issues which have also been discussed already around uh, problems with connectivity. Um, A, getting a connection in some rural areas in Wales uh, and, and uh, also the, the cost, data poverty costs of uh, affording uh, an, an ongoing broadband uh, contract uh, for people on a fixed income is quite challenging. Um, and then uh, it should also be mentioned uh, the cost of devices, the initial cost, the outlay of devices such as tablets or computers or even smartphones really uh, to connect to 4G. Um, the, the report, Leave No One Behind, focuses on five key areas. There's a, a, a chapter on social care and health. There's a chapter on uh, the economy and older people, for many older people, also being uh, uh, shielding or self-isolating or even finding themselves furloughed from work. Um, and then the, the third chapter, which is about stopping abuse of older people. And then the last two chapters is about strengthening our communities and improving communication and inclusion. And those last three are the ones I'll focus on for my presentation in, in this webinar. So first, last first, improving communications and inclusion. And Derek mentioned earlier uh, that 41% um, of over 75s are not online. Um, and during our engagements, we learned that 50% of older people over the age of 70 had been negatively impacted by not being online, having difficulties with accessing groceries, medication or, or other essential services. And, and the, the commissioner in the report makes five calls for action. A, uh, one was to audit uh, those older people who we knew were digitally excluded in our communities and to reach out to them with devices and solutions to their connectivity problems. Secondly, we want digital connectivity to be considered as a right. 
in this exactly the, the same way, and I, I saw it mentioned on the chat earlier, that electricity or gas or water is considered an essential utility. But in this day and age, in the 21st century, so is digital connectivity. Thirdly, we will want, want to see uh, an, an expansion of the social tariff. There are social tariffs out there, they're limited. There are only two or three of the main providers who offer a social tariff, but they're very well um, hidden. Uh, they're, they're not the best advertised uh, service available. Um, and, and in the end, the Commission would like to see the development of free universal access across our communities, across Wales. The fourth action point that the Commissioner uh, uh, pointed to was that local health boards and local authorities need to undertake outreach programmes to reach out to these digitally excluded older people in order to help them gain the confidence, gain the skills to get online. And it's heartening to see many local authorities are already undertaking that kind of work and, and, and we'd like to support them in doing that. And I know that they're supporting and being supported by Digital Communities Wales as well. Second category I wanted to focus on was the abuse of older people. And I was so relieved that, that Derek uh, talked about uh, scams and being scammed. And I was on the phone this morning with a nice gentleman called John, who was from the technical department of Microsoft, who wanted to help me get onto my computer to get on some details and show me what was wrong with my computer. Um, I lied to him. I told him I was on Apple, um, but he still insisted that Microsoft could help me with my Apple Mac. Um, and, and, and it is a concern, it's a deep concern, uh, that they speak with so much authority. And my generation, I'm, I'm not a young chick, but my generation, we have been brought up to listen to authority and we respond to authority. And therefore we are easily guided to respond to their instructions and allow them to scam us or steal from us. Uh, and, and perpetrate their crimes. We've heard terrible uh, examples of COVID-19 scams and crimes, uh, trying to get people to, to part with, as Derek mentioned, uh, information or finances to pay for their COVID-19 vaccination. Uh, so that we consider that online safety is, is paramount to protect older people who we are encouraging to get online. So that as well as the practical use of online techniques and uh, indicators, and like Derek mentioned, you know, clicking on the email address and seeing this long string of, of uh, non-official uh, email addresses, uh, but there's also need to practice the mantra of how to respond to those technical departments phoning us up and asking us to get on our computers and to, uh, to tap in our passwords and our ba uh, bank details. So they're, they're ne that needs to be reinforced, we believe. Last but not least, strengthening our communities. The, the Leave No One Behind uh, has a chapter on strengthening our communities and we acknowledge the, that the pandemic has brought out some of the best in our communities already. Uh, people have gathered together, uh, formed support groups, volunteered, uh, and, and, and have gone the extra mile to maintain the dignity and the independence of all the people in their communities. And we feel that we need to build on that goodwill and on that community spirit and to uh, harness those community groups and volunteers, the third sector, the local authority community connectors to help to reach out to uh, those who are digitally excluded and become digital champions and to become digital companions 
and digital buddies and to assist older people to get online safely. And when uh, we come out of this pandemic, that we have to re-engage with that intergenerational work uh, that uh, Derek mentioned, the, the, the digital heroes that, that previously did such fantastic work uh, buddying up between uh, primary schools and care homes. And we need to expand that into our communities. Lastly, uh, going forward, and I, and I think, you know, Derek has mentioned it, and, and both Derek's have mentioned it. I'm, I'm glad I'm not called Derek, we've got three Derek's in a row. But um, what do we have to do, to do going forward? It, it, well, we have to inspire. We have to motivate all the people and enable and assist them where they want to, to get online. But we have to ensure that they have the skills and the confidence to get the benefits of being online, not the fears of being online. And in order to do that, we have to protect all the people if we're encouraging them to come online by educating them, supporting them, continued support, way past the just getting them online. We have to have somebody in our community that they're able to turn to in order to uh, support them when they uh, when they are approached by these scammers or when they have a difficulty with remembering what to do to get on to a certain program or app. But finally, however, the, I will refer back to the title of the Commissioner's report, which is Leave No One Behind. So we have to acknowledge that there are people, there will be people who do not want to be online. And we have to therefore ensure that they are able to access services and information by non-digital means. And therefore we call on all public bodies to ensure that they have a strategy in place to make sure that all the people who are not online don't miss out on information and services. Thank you very much, Derek. Thank you. And um, I, a number of people on the, on the chat have made the point about people who are, who are not going to be able to access uh, the online service or don't want to. They need to be. They need to have access to services still, and they need to have mechanisms to do that. There's issues like cash, because cash you know, developing a cashless society is not going to be the way for many, many older people to go. And somebody mentioned Bitcoin and I got, I saw a story I think this morning that um, some corporate body has actually started investing in Bitcoin for real. So I think you can expect a shed full of um, Bitcoin scams shortly. So watch out for Bitcoin scams, I think. I think all older people are dying to be able to meet to together again. It is, it is. I mean, Zoom is very good for conferences and, and meetings and all that but it's not the same as we know as, as, a, as a physical meeting and we miss it so much. And we, we have been in effect locked in our houses, our, our generation now for nearly 12 months. Um, and it is, it is, for many people, it's a lonely, lonely and difficult experience, but um, there we go. And we'd love to do more intergenerational work once we can do that. I'm sure a lot of our NPC members will be doing, doing just that. Uh, we'll, we'll move now on now to, um, here from Joe Galzaka, who is a, a, a full-time officer with Unite the Union. She, she has the responsibility for looking after the Unite retired members in Wales, but she also has responsibility for what's called um, the Unite Community Group, and she'll talk about that, I've no doubt. Joe, over to you. You're right. Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah brilliant. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, no, I just... Um, yeah, so I'm Jo, um, and as Derek said, I'm the Women and Equalities Officer. And really, I just wanted to start by thanking you for inviting me to come and speak. It is a real pleasure. In my role as the Women and Equalities Officer, I have the real pleasure of looking after our retired members, which includes Derek, and our younger members. As many of you know, our retired members in Unite are a real force to be reckoned with. 
We're huge in numbers. We've got around 15,000 retired members in Unite Wales. They're at the forefront of campaigning, whether that's around the TV licence, um, access to public toilets, free universal benefits and much more. My inspiration um, and I drew back my union. It comes as no surprise from Strauss Proof. Sure, like many of you, um, you miss her. I, I miss her quite a lot. She made sure that their voices was never unheard in Unite Wales. It was Smith who championed the importance of our intergenerational working in our union. Her last motion to our National Retired Members Conference was on the very subject of tackling loneliness and isolation. She drew on the need for our retired members to teach each other, learn from our experiences and do better. This is something that we practice um, in Unite Wales. The intergener intergenerational working really matters. Our retired members are part of our Uniting Schools project. So we actually do go into schools with our retired members. And I believe Derek is trained up to do that. And we talk about our joint experiences, what matters. Phyllis is somebody who said to us that actually, do you know what? This divide that they're trying to draw between our younger members and our older members is something we're gonna challenge. I think it's in this last year that I've truly missed Phyllis, holding my feet to the fire and giving me, giving me my to-do list to make sure retired members were never excluded in the way that we conduct our business as a union. I think it's no surprise that like the rest of Wales, we've moved our meetings online. Zoom being our chosen method to conduct business. With that, we've seen surprising results, but also learned some really tough lessons. People who have never been online themselves, never even owned an email, I finally got online and I always talk to Derek about our member Ted Jenks in North Wales. He's 82 and in the last year has signed up on email and is using his tablet and accessing our meetings. What we did at the start of the pandemic was write to all of our members, trying to instruct them about how they could get online. And I think we mentioned um, we've got champions, um, digital champions in any problems were dealt with but I think it's already been said today we can't not acknowledge there is a, there's a number of members that the process has actually unintentionally excluded there are members that still can't get online they don't want to get online you don't have access to a phone, so a lot of them is wall dialing via the phone. But like Derek said, we to do meetings that we haven't seen in the last months. We are each of those people, but we won't see them until we meet again in person. We do have a duty to become accessible. If we are doing what does that mean? for our disabled members, for our older members. We've, to do. We've, seen in, uh, we've seen in the last few months the importance of children online and the that Simon Jets in Wales that are handing out laptops, asking people to donate their, um, you know, their smart devices. That I, I've seen actually some of donating them to older people, which I think as a union, we have a role to get involved in as well. Technology and access to the broadband has been critical, and that's for all of us. I think Derek mentioned at the start the homes in terms of contacting their relatives, having those tablets, getting them set up. We've all um, not seen family for months, and the access to the critic is speaking with the phone, but seeing face to face contact is good for our mental health. I want to radical concept of broadband free for all is almost accepted as a basic need, a basic need to participate in society. As a union, we recognise that digital exclusion is an equalities issue. It's highlighted, uh, COVID has highlighted that equalities uh, issues have been heightened by COVID-19. The move to a cashless society cannot be overlooked. 
Our role in making sure information is accessible to all is important. We talk about um, high street banking. Actually, our retired members told us that that is their weekly outing for some people. So moving away from that has become problematic. And I know Derek and Phyllis have been involved in a lot of work around that. We can't allow the digital divide to widen. We can't allow it to move at a pace that we can't catch up, at such a pace that we can't catch up. I was thinking about this and the things that we should be doing more of in terms of public bodies and their role in this. Are we calling for uh, a quality impact assessments on information moving online? Are we looking at how that doesn't leave people behind? And, you know, if we are services, especially through local authorities moving online, what are quality impact assessments are there to address those that aren't online? We need to be thinking of, of things like that. I think I've said it, no one left behind. And I think that's a really, really powerful thing. Young and old, no one should be left behind in the digital age. Information needs to be accessible in all formats. Picking up the phone, writing a letter is just as important as sending an email. I think we read, didn't we, that the biggest barrier is lack of confidence and lack of knowledge. What we do as a union is, is we do train and we do um, put on training for our retired members for those in the workplace that haven't got the knowledge or the confidence to get online. We do provide free courses. We do want to work together to tackle the digital divide. Like I said, COVID has exposed that it's a poverty issue, affordability. People don't have the money or the resources to have um, phones with G4 on, as you said. They don't have the month, sorry, 4G. They don't have um, access to laptops. Um, we're talking about the last year that, you know, the amenities that people use, the libraries, the hubs in Cardiff, um, local leisure centres, wherever it might be to get that access, we've got to recognise that that's no longer there and it won't be there for some time. So what are we doing to get around that? Um, we talked about disadvantaged communities, our BAEM membership, they are um, telling us just as much that they are struggling, they haven't got, you know, there's misinformation out there. But again, we recognise as a trade union our role in addressing this. Um, the issue of digital exclusion in our workplaces and our communities has to be a priority. And I think we would welcome, as a trade union movement, bigger involvement um, in the Digital Inclusion Alliance. I think as much as third sector uh, partners have a role, I think we are in every workplace, in every community, and it is our role to be there um, helping with that. It starts with empowering our members and not forgetting not all of our members know about an event or know about something just because you've sent an email and I think we are closely moving towards that. Well I've sent an email Derek, have you not picked it up? Um, we need to use formats, the traditional formats of writing a letter and cost should never be an excuse not to do that. I think yeah making the effort for communication matters Picking up the phone to our retired members is something that the Swansea retired members do. Finally, you know, I want to finish by saying a huge thanks to Derek and our Swansea Unite retired members branch. They have been a massive support to our union throughout this pandemic. They've reached out, reached out to our members and helped us get, get our members online. Um, they've kept me grounded. They've kept, you know, told me things that I didn't know about, especially the online um, access to your GP, that's something that I learned from Derek. So, you know, reaching out to digitally, digitally excluded people has to be our priority, but we can't forget that there is a generation and a group of people that will never and don't want to be online for whatever reason, and we cannot exclude them from participating fully in our union, but also our communities and our workplaces. So thank you so much. And yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. And I think one of the things that comes out of what Joe was talking about is the enormous contribution that older people make to, to society in Wales. When you look at what they, what older people do, I mean, I'm, I'm a school governor still and things like that. And, and there are older people volunteering in all sorts of roles and they, and they miss being able to undertake those, those roles bitterly at the moment because of the, because of the COVID um, situation. Joe also emphasised the importance of things like equality impact assessments and I think that's going to be very important going forward and the older people's commission of course will, will also reinforce the fact 
you know, age is a protected characteristic under the Equality Act. And sometimes that gets forgotten, I think, or ignored in some cases, ignored. And I think we, we're, on the, we're on the case on making sure that that doesn't, um, doesn't happen. Right, I'm gonna move on now to Jenny Sims, who's, go, who's an executive member of the um, NPC. Uh, she's at work on, works on the um, digital inclusion um, subcommittee. So she'll have a, a particular view on this issue, Jenny. Hello, I'm unmuted, am I? Yes, you can hear me, yes? Right, um, I'm wearing two hats today. I'm um, a freelance journalist and I'm a member of the NUJ, um, as well as being uh, the chair of the NPC's Digital Working Party. Um, it's because of the NUJ, really, this campaign has got off the ground and I'm very happy to hear all that's being done um, already throughout Wales. It's very inspiring. And particularly what Joe has just said and suggested about um, keeping track and finding out how people have been affected in the epidemic, you know, in the pandemic, lots of things we can take forward. Um, I want to bring in um, democracy and digital exclusion because um, this hasn't really had a great deal of coverage. We've talked about digital exclusion and people being left behind, but we haven't yet talked about how they're being left out possibly of elections. Wales has got an election coming up in May. And uh, also in that election, we've got young people voting 16 to 18 year olds for the first time. Where are they going to get their news from? Um, they're likely to be getting um, news from their from their smartphones, from their iPads, if they want to get engaged. Where, uh, in this particular time, are older people going to be getting their news from? As in Wales, as particularly in Wales, um, newspapers have been decimated, local and nationally. We've got very poor, poor coverage. What there is is going online and in the future is looking grim. All sorts of interesting things are happening, but not enough attention is being paid to those people, to older people, vulnerable people, disabled people who are not online and not going to be engaged. Uh, we started looking into this with my very first digital working party meeting with the NPC when the General Secretary gave us uh, as a first task to uh, look at the House of Lords um, Select Committee's inquiry into democracy and digital technologies. So uh, we hit the round running and within a week we had done the research and come up with some recommendations for the General Secretary to submit. And what we found was in the questions that the House of Lords was asking in that select committee, there was very little uh, questioning about older people. So we made that point. And we also made recommendations that digital literacy should be taught and media literacy should be taught in schools. And in addition, a lot of attention needs to be paid and provision made for older people for digital skills learning, for lifelong learning. It took nine months for that, uh, that select committee to report back and they published in June last year. And Lord Putnam was the chair and the forward. And in some places it was quite scathing about uh, what is and what is not happening. And they made 85 recommendations. But well, I'm happy to say that among those recommendations were ours coming from the NPC, as far as they're related to um, kids getting taught in school and older people. And there's an awful lot in that report about digital, about democracy and what democracy really means. There's loads of stuff from academics, from journalists, from politicians, um, really making the case that you can't have democracy unless you've got an informed public, an informed citizenship. Well, 
with the lack of newspapers, with the lack of uh, people online, as far as older people are concerned, you're not going to have an informed citizenship. So it's really, really important that we all get together and the NPC really helps to signpost people to getting engaged and getting online and showing them where to get help through all the things that you, you know, the uh, in, uh, uh, Derek Walker, your organization, Joe, your organization, what's already happening? We are going to be helping to signpost people to what's available and encourage them to, to get on board. Um, I'd like to um, flag up the fact that um, on March the 1st, yes, St. David's Day, um, a new news agency, a national agency will be born. Um, it's been funded by NewsQuest uh, with a skeleton number of new journalists on board and then you're making use of uh, the NewsQuest uh, journalists that already exist in Wales, but they are being set up specifically looking at engaging people politically, making people more digitally aware and uh, more aware of the issues and getting the discussion going. So that's great. But what about the older people who are not yet online? They're, how are they going to get, who are they going to vote for? Are they just going to vote on the election manifestos that come out from the various political parties? Uh, it needs more. So I'm going to be brief because um, we're going to learn with our next speaker about fantastic policies on digital inclusion that the Welsh Government have. And I'm sure we'll get more encouragement to tell us about how they're going to cater for the people who are not, will not and never get online. But I want to <clears throat> raise the issue of the future of journalism in Wales, of media provision, and coming down the line, it's going to be hyperlocals, hubs, a lot will be online. We've got to get more people online. So the NPC will be supporting all that you do and helping people do just that. I'm going to stop there. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Right. Well, we'll, we'll tell you what, we'll move on to, um, to hear Glyn Jones now, who's um, speaking on behalf of Welsh Government. Basically, he's the he's the digital chief digital officer. So, uh, uh, Derek, sorry to interrupt. I'm yeah. afraid Glyn Jones hasn't arrived yet. He hasn't arrived yet, has he? No. Ah, uh, what do we do now? When what time is coming? Is um, he? Uh, he might be coming at half past twelve. Is it? You might want to move on to the next speaker if possible. Um, I don't know if he's possibly coming in slightly later. Oh, uh, we've got a time from Catherine Evans here, 12.25. Right, 12.25. Right, we're, we're running out of speakers, you see. <laughs> <laughs> OK, it was going to be Julie, you see. OK, well, perhaps what we'll do is deal with some of the questions that have, that have, come, that have come up in the, in the chat. OK, um, first one is probably for Joe. Uh, a couple of people are asking, can't the trades unions... Um, somehow negotiate a package for their members to get a cheap deal to get online? Yeah, I think that's um, something that um, our affiliated services should look at. You always get the emails about low insurance and life insurance and things. I think if it's something that the retired members want, and remember we're a lay member-led union, so if our retired members are saying it's something we need to pilot in an area or we want to look at it, it's got to come through our retired members. But obviously the cost element to it but why shouldn't we you know we, we've got the tool to look for cheaper utility prices so if it's something that we should be looking at getting the cheapest possible deal then I think we should Derek um but that'll have to come from yourself Derek and our members to do that right okay we can have a look at that then okay there's a similar one really saying that um can't we even talk to the internet service providers? But I suppose that's the same sort of question, really. That yeah, we could maybe have a look at look at that and see if we can negotiate some kind of deal. I think the Digital Inclusion Alliance. I think I think the game one for you, for you, Joe. I think yeah, we're we're definitely going to get the trades unions involved in that. I would think, aren't we? But it, it is because it's a workplace issue as much as it is an issue for the community. Because a lot of 
you think about it overnight, we've gone to working from home and there's that sort of um, assumption, everybody's got internet, internet access at home, everybody's got the tools to do the job from home. So I think we've got to be in every workplace talking about that, about how we upskill and, you know, get on with that job, so. Okay, Derek, we'd, we'd very much welcome that. Um, I was just saying in the chat, the Digital Inclusion Alliance is something we propose to Welsh Government as a way of bringing organisations together to promote digital inclusion. And it needs to include um, organisations from all different sectors, representing lots of different people to have its power. I guess the idea is it will be a, a voice from outside government to influence not just Welsh Government but local authorities, private organisations and others to think about digital inclusion, how they support their clients and customers but also to, as Joe has mentioned very powerfully, not to forget those that who are, who are not online and are never going to be online so that there's always another option for others to access what they need to do. So I'll make sure to connect Joe up with the Digital Inclusion Alliance people to ensure Unite the Union and, and NUJ and others can um, can get involved. Okay. And the other the other comment you put on, on, on your on your chat in uh, response was talking about the uh, local banking services and um, that there is a commitment to to to, to, in, to enhance local banking services in well. Do you want to fill a bit more on that? Yeah I'm really happy to so this this was in Mark Drakeford's leadership manifesto to put in place a cooperative community bank for Wales. Um, and the idea was many areas of Wales, as we all know, as has come up a few times, are losing their banking services. And um, this isn't because they're not needed by customers. And what we found is this isn't because they're not profitable. It's because often banks seem to be able to get away with closing them and make more profits um, as a result of doing so. And so, you know, many communities where they used to have three or four banks now have no banks. And this is a, you know, um, a clo you know, this is a, a death knell for town centres. It means that those people that are not used to using, uh, you know, online banking and so forth are going to find it more difficult. Uh, you know, all the issues that we know, there are, there are reasons why we still need banking facilities. They might, they may look different. From how they used to do, they used to be, but they need to, you know, they they need to still exist, and people need to have access to banking services. You know what we're sorry to bang on about it, but what you find is, you know, you you know, businesses will close at lunchtime on a Friday in order to get to the bank, which is three towns away, and that's no good for the local community, and that's no good for the local economy. And you see, you know, you see SMEs, small businesses suffer as a result. So as a result of um, Mark Drakeford's commitment there, um, I've been involved with others in something called Bank Cambria, B-A-N-C, spelt the Welsh way, Cambria, to look at setting a cooperative and community bank up for Wales. And we were looking at models being, um, you know, a sort of federated model with similar business models being adopted in other parts of the UK. So the South West has also been looking at this, South West of England now. Um, anyway, to cut a long story short, you know, it's a lot of work, you need to get a bike, banking license and so forth. Um, but we think we found um, some sort of solution which will be able to address people's needs. And um, I can't say any more because we're not allowed to say any more at the moment, but expect yeah. an announcement about this in the spring. I think it's a really exciting initiative which will address some of the banking issues faced by many people particularly in rural areas but not just rural areas yeah um thank you uh, peter lockland from h Comrie asks about the um feasibility of having connectivity as a, as a human right actually npc policy now is to say that um yes there should be a right to digital access like like you have the right to access clean water and electric electricity and gas services and they should be treated in the same way and regarded as, a, as an essential essential service and um i think you'll feel you'll, you'll find that's going to be expressed for example um most of the older people's organizations in wales have drafted manifestos for the forthcoming election and virtually all of them include a a, a requirement or demand that um 
access to broadband becomes in effect a right, um, and that, that that's um, that's something we we we, we, will, we will no doubt no doubt be be pursuing. Um, what the, the, the thing I've really noticed, and it's very significant, is, and Welsh government have, have committed themselves to it, is the increasing dependence of the health service now on digital technology, and the, and the COVID nineteen crisis has acted as an accelerator on that front massively. I mean, Joanne mentioned Joe mentioned the um, you know most GP services now have this thing called. Um, Ask my GP. You can you can contact your GP service online, uh, and you can get an answer to a question from wherever, whoever you want. Uh, and I've used it; it's very effective. But other people have, I, I, won't use it at all. But the more and more health services are going that way. And my wife, for example, is it was shielding, and she has she's under the at the moment under, under clinics involving the hospitals, and that's all gone online. You know, it's, it's 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 getting more and more like that, and um, that's a reality. But um, that's going to leave an awful lot of people who don't have access, and they they need to be looked after. Right? Anybody else want to come in? And um, can I just jump in a second, Eric, just to let you know we're hoping to have Glyn Jones at quarter past twelve, so that's in about four minutes' time. That's great. Okay. Anybody else want to come in, G uh, Jenny? Um, yes, just about safety online and um, providing um, help for those who are scared about scams, etc. Um, even at the NUJ, um, we, we're continually looking how do we help people keep up to date. So even last Monday, which was um, National Dignity Day, NUJ Training Wales put on um, a workshop, a training workshop, um, to, um, you know, give advice about keeping safe online and um, how to spot scammers, etc. And it was um, very well attended. And as a result of that, we're going to have another two day um, uh, special workshop looking on scams and safety. And um, it's something that we're all going to be having to do, I think, continually, all of us. So I'll just throw that in there. We're keep trying to keep on top of things and uh, continually provide to um, keep people safe online. Right. Louisa, do you want to come in? Yes. Um, I was wondering, how, how do we launch? I mean, <laughs> like you said, um, there's not much information going out. I mean, we, we, we no longer have a, a um, National Pensioners Office here in Bills Wells. And the, the, we don't know where they are. They close shop. So how do we, and we'll just have a community service here with whom I share um, email from NPC or uh, pensioners forums emails with. So how do we um, get all this information out? Especially within the farming community who live, who are really isolated, you know, um, because no longer do we have, what's, what's that big organization where women make cakes and things like that? The um, Women's Institute. Women's Institute. Wonderful organization, yes. Yes. <laughs> that, that since, since March last year, no more. No cakes. And I, I, I get, I, when I go down to the co-op, I get uh, people saying to me, we see more of you in, now in bills than we used to before. How can you help us? And I don't know what to say because they, they are really lonely. And, um, and with the pubs closing down where farmers used to converge, um, and with the Royal Welsh dead, <laughs> which is now a, a COVID center, I, I feel this is the psychological effects of this lockdown is terrible in the, in the, farming, in the farming community. From I, I, I and I, I can't even go to Tregaron where I used to go before, so I, I know how they feel. So how do we reach these people? And many of them don't have they they don't have digital. They don't have my mother-in-law who lives in Kedrod, She can't get um, internet service. Nothing. So how do we reach these people? How do we? 
Right, I think, well, the, 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 there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, the vaccination programme, which is which is going very well in Wales now. I've had, I know I've had mine, I'll bet most people on, on this me meeting today have had theirs too by now. So uh, we can't, nobody, can, nobody can really put a, an immediate time scale on it, but one would hope that by the summer, by the summer that we will be able to start meeting again. And I think once that happens, there will be an explosion of, of setting up of mechanisms to do that, including you know restoring the WEI to its rightful place and so on. And there will be new groupings, I think, because one of the things we've noticed with, with using Zoom is if you do an all Wales meeting, it's much it's quotes much better because it, it doesn't involve traveling to Flandred and Odd Wells and things like that. But I can see local groups being set up all over Wales once this dreadful thing starts to end. And I think then we'll, we'll be busy. NPC Wales will have to think long and hard about how it works then, because then I think we're in the position of saying, well, we can meet each other and we can provide support and we can find out what people need in their local areas. And we do it by meeting people. And that's the that's fundamentally what we're all crying out to do, I think. And I, and I you know, it's, it's going to happen. So uh, don't be too pessimistic. I, th I and I, I don't underestimate how how popular it will be for us for us all to get together. I know all our members feel very strongly that most of them don't want to do Zoom meetings at all because it's not the same, and they want that they want that physical they want that physical contact. Now I believe. Um, can can I jump in? Yeah. Sorry, Jones has arrived. Oh, right. Yeah, I just noticed that. Right. Thank you very much. Right. I'm going to ask. Um, Mr. Glyn Jones to introduce himself, and he's going to, uh, as the Chief Digital Officer, he'll he'll know what's going on. Over to uh, Mr. Jones, Glyn. Hi, good afternoon, Pranda, Pranda. from Glyn. Uh, thanks for the introductions. Um, yes, so I, I I'm I'm deeply sorry that I wasn't here to hear the rest of the discussion. So I don't know if I have all the answers, um, but uh, but it is a privilege to be able to speak to you today. Uh, and I apologise on behalf of the Minister, who I know is keen to attend today, and uh, uh, hopefully I'll be an able deputy for her. Um, so um, it's, it's great to be able to speak today. I'm going to talk for a few minutes and I'm happy to be involved in, in a conversation um, uh, on the critical topic of digital inclusion, uh, particularly as it is Safer Internet Day on the importance of being safe and secure online. Um, so I was sorry not be able to hear the full event and to hear from uh, you, Derek, as chair for the Welsh National Pensioners Convention on the issue of digital poverty and the issues of isolation and endangering older people. Uh, and I'm sure Derek in the co-op centre has also been talking about the role Digital Communities Wales is also playing in overcoming these concerns and supporting citizens to gain the digital skills they need, including being safe and secure. Um, so obviously we've been doing lots of work on the digital strategy uh, and I'll talk a little tiny bit about that as a bit of a plug, um, but many of these issues are at the heart of what we want to think about in terms of how we're providing public services in the future and how those public services are accessible for all. And I just started getting a glimpse of some of those issues and barriers that people are facing from hearing the last two minutes there. I, I think it's fair to say that we've been guilty probably of taking for granted the importance placed on everyone being digitally confident having the motivation, the digital skills and access, including devices and connectivity to engage with digital technology. But as I'm sure you've been discussing, the pandemic has highlighted how being digitally confident is not uh, a nice to have any longer, whether it's for maintaining contacts with friends and families, grocery shopping or accessing vital services. Uh, and I know my, um, you know, my mother-in-law uh, has come on leaps and bounds in the last year in her use of her iPad in terms of contacting us and just keeping in touch. Uh, but every so often something will happen on her iPad. She emailed me, or she rang me the other day and just said she'd had this alert come up from an app saying um, click, click on this to, um, to authorise yourself. And you know, she, those kind of things can easily become worrying for people who are reliant on, on these um, services and this technology for just uh, making contact with people or using their shopping. Um, so there still remains a significant number of people who don't personally use the internet, either due to choice, fear, affordability or a lack of motivation, skills and access. And this is a critical social justice and equality challenge for us. There are a national survey for Wales uh, looking at the latest data for 2019-20 pre-pandemic showed 10%, that's around 250,000 of Welsh adults 16 or over, 
say that they do not personally use the internet. In December of last year, 2020, the Minister for Housing and Local Government published the Digital Inclusion Forward Look towards a digitally confident Wales. You may have already touched on this this morning. Uh, and that sets out how policy will be built on the recognised need to support everyone to gain motivation, confidence and skills in order to make informed decisions and choose how they participate in and make the most of our increasingly digital world. As a government, we want to work to ensure that no citizen is left behind as we embrace a digital first approach and digital inclusion is going to be at the heart of everything we're doing. So I've mentioned the digital strategy already. I hope you're all aware of the work we're doing. This is being led by Lee Waters, who's the Deputy Minister for Economy and Transport. He is the Minister with the Portfolio Responsibility for uh, Digital as a, as a Collective Matter for, for Welsh Government. And he's been leading on developing the digital strategy for Wales. Um, and um, the Deputy Minister very much comes from the perspective that this is not about computers. This is not just about uh, wires and cables. Uh, this is about um, public services and the public services being provided to people in the right way. Whether that is through uh, an online service or not, using digital approaches to understand the needs of users, the needs of people and how they want to access services. And that might be a, a lovely app or a lovely website. It might be a phone call. It might be other ways of accessing that services. But by using digital ways of thinking and user-centered design, we can really get underneath uh, some of those issues. So the vision of our digital strategy is that digital in Wales will improve quality of life, sustainability and economic growth, creating user-centered public services supported by effective leadership data and a culture of innovation and collaboration. And we're clear, and Deputy Minister is clear, that we can't deliver this vision without ensuring we live in a digitally confident Wales. Uh, and one of the missions is specifically on digital inclusion, but also obviously that overlaps with the mission on digital skills as well in terms of confidence and, um, and, and uh, digital skills. So we think we have an opportunity to tackle wider social justice issues such as financial and social exclusion through the use of technology, but we need to ensure everyone can fully participate. During the pandemic, we have seen that claiming pension credit digitally has become available. This will supplement the existing telephone and postal claim facilities rather than replacing them. This ensures that those eligible to claim have the choice as to whether they leave home to post forms, claim online or speak to somebody via the phone. And that's very much what we're trying to achieve with our user-centered design approach for all public services, that people are given that choice and, the, and to access the services the way they want to access them. Uh, access them. Um, but with the increasing shift to digital, there's a growing need for individuals, regardless of age, as part of being digitally confident, to understand their rights online and how to navigate digital technology safely, securely and with confidence. And today, of course, and I'm sure, again, you've been talking about this already, we celebrate Safer Internet Day across the UK with a tightly focus on an internet we trust, exploring reliability in the online world. And this is a topic dependent on citizens having the digital skills to understand and separate fact from fiction. We're increasingly become aware there's been a rise in the number of reported scams being targeted around COVID-19. Within the last few weeks, we've seen reports of text messages being sent by fraudsters asking people to provide bank details in order to book a vaccine appointment. The skill of being able to understand and separate fact from fiction is absolutely critical. To support and drive this agenda, Digital Community Wales Digital Confidence Health and Wellbeing Programme works with organisations best placed to help those who need support to use digital technologies. We strive to ensure digital inclusion is embedded within organisations. And since the programme started in July 2019, we've supported over 30,000 citizens with the motivation and skills needed to engage with digital technology effectively. Crucially, the training provided by Digital Community Wales includes tips on how to stay safe and secure online, including protecting privacy, which is passed on to citizens by frontline staff and volunteers. For those who may have a device already and connection, but they lack the digital skills and confidence, we continue to raise awareness of the online platform Learn My Way. Learn My Way allows people to access a wide range of courses on topics such as managing money online, being safe and legal online, video calling and accessing health information. These courses are informal and people can develop basic digital skills at the pace and location convenient to them and for free. However, as I've said, we recognise and acknowledge there will always be those who cannot or decide not to participate digitally. Therefore, we must ensure there are alternative ways to access services and they're developed to be just as good as those offered online. 
And we've seen the pandemic have a significant and continuing impact on those we support to use digital. It's quite critical that those developing future services for a post-pandemic era consider those implications for those who aren't digitally competent. So if we do ensure Welsh citizens are digitally confident by having the necessary motivation, skills and access, particularly in our older population, we think we could contribute to the triple aims of the health and social care system in Wales to improve the health and well-being of the population, to continuously improve the quality of the care we provide and to ensure we get the maximum value from the resources we have available. And we also know that digital technology can play a role in tackling loneliness and social isol isolation by connecting people to their communities, developing support and social networks and contributing to overcoming some of the impacts of physical and mental illness. So once again, I'm grateful for being able to come here and talk to you today. And again, I apologise on behalf of the Minister for not being able to uh, join instead. Um, the wide range of speakers that's been on the agenda today highlights the importance of supporting everyone to becoming digitally confident. And this will be critical as we look to recover from the numerous and severe impacts of the pandemic. And just to finish off, as we gather feedback for developing our strategic framework on digital inclusion and our digital strategy for Wales, I want to ensure you that digital consultation hasn't been and will not be the only method used. So I know that ministers are really keen to hear the findings from the engagement that my team are undertaking on the strategy and our digital inclusion team are, are undertaking. Uh, and, and when the restrictions allow to understand the barriers faced by citizens through all those different types of engagement. And I think that's what you were probably just touching on before I joined. So our aim is to really co-produce both the framework and our digital strategy that delivers on our desire for digitally confident Wales. And we're clear that we in Welsh Government can't do this alone. We need to work with uh, the people around the table today and, and many other organisations uh, to uh, ensure that we are a digital nation. So thanks for the opportunity to join you today and happy to be part of the discussion for the next few minutes. Thank you. Um, right. Well, I'll start with a couple. Earlier on, a number of um, issues arose in, in, in many ways. First one is, uh, in some places in Wales, people don't have access to a digital signal. And uh, there's, there's, there's a question about how that issue is going to be dealt with under the strategy and what plans there are to, to, to deal with that. Because it's, it's a bit of a spotty place, Wales, in, in terms of internet um, broadband signal access. That, that was the first question. The second one, as, as people have asked, is um, fine. You've got a Welsh government strategy, but how's that going to be translated into action in, in the local authorities and the health boards? Um, are they going to be required to have their own accountable, locally accountable strategies and in, in, in doing all that? Will they be required to carry out proper, you know, e equality impact assessments of, of decisions they may they may make in the, along that road? If you'd like to try and start with those, we can see what other questions other other, other people have. Yes, sure. Sorry, just puffing up for questions. Um, okay, so on uh, on connectivity, I, I you know I was certain this would be uh, an issue that many of you would discuss, and obviously it's become even more apparent during the pandemic how important this is to get right. We, we know it in terms of what I just spoke about in terms of loneliness and isolation, but also our education system and so on. Um, so um, we're really mindful that this is something that uh, we need to um, set, um, set a clear plan for. Um, but um, you know, uh, as I'm sure many of you know, responsibility for this rest of the UK government. We see this. We see access to broadband as essential, regardless of the location. You can take that you know, as a given. Um, but we know that there are seventy thousand premises currently unable to access superfast speeds. Uh, and Welsh government has stepped into this to provide its own funding to mitigate the impact of poor connectivity. UK government is now concentrating its efforts on achieving gigabit, gigabit capable connectivity across the UK. So we need to. Um, we need to push the government to ensure that we're not left behind and that they're investing in the digital infrastructure of Wales and take into consideration you know, the unique plan, landscape of Wales in doing this. Um, so it, it, it's a big issue. Um, we're, we are, we're all thinking about it and thinking about what the UK government plans on this now means for our approach in Wales uh, and to try and make sure that we somehow um, resolve these issues. And also to try and understand much more about um, the impact this is having. So I was in a conversation the other day about really trying to understand 
from the information our education colleagues have got uh, about the families that uh, are struggling with connectivity and understanding more about what, what may be possible. Um, so I appreciate it's an issue, um, but um, that, that, that's um, you know, hopefully a bit of a response on that. On the, um, on the issue of the uh, wider sectors and organisations, so I think, well, to be clear, the digital strategy is a Welsh Government-led strategy, but it's very much one that is for the whole of, um, uh, of, of the public sector, but also other sectors as well. Um, it's not something we're going to, we, we know we're not going to deliver alone. So the next steps of the digital strategy, we've been consulting on it since December through a series of blogs and engagement events. Um, and we are working very hard now to get a, uh, we're calling it a final strategy published before the election. However, we want that to be very much you know, a final version for now, but one we will adapt and change as circumstances evolve over the next year uh, and coming years. However, alongside that, we'll have a delivery plan and we want to be clear in the delivery plan who has responsibility for taking forward specific actions. Some of those will be Welsh Government, uh, some of them we will be pushing the UK Government as I've just mentioned, some of them will be for local authorities and, and health uh, and we, we also want to think about how we can support third sector as well and I was in a conversation with the WCVA and I've spoken to Derek in the co-op about this um, because really keen the digital strategy talks about public services in, as, as a whole. Um, to help us achieve that, we've now got a Chief Digital Officer in local government. So I'm Chief Digital Officer was, was responsible for Welsh Government and um, our, our own uh, digital agenda. We have a Chief Digital Officer for local government, Sam Hall. She came into post in October. Um, we have a Centre for Digital Public Services, who um, ministers are funding next year with just under £5 million to go out and work with the public sector to drive up skills and leadership help them take forward particular digital projects, uh, to share information, to share knowledge, uh, so that we're working as, 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 um, uh, as collaboratively as possible. Because we, we know many people are trying to solve the same issues. So if you're, if you're trying to look, uh, look at a particular project we have going on at the moment is looking at how people access social care in three local authorities. Well, that, that, that issue of people not understanding their journey through the social care system, um, staff, um, the wrong staff being contacted because people don't know who to contact. All those things are, are universal for social care departments, but also uh, probably resonate with other departments as well. So it's really important that we learn from each other and look at the best way to do things. And that's why the centre has a cross-sectoral approach. That's why myself, Sam, uh, the chief executive of the centre, and um, there will be a chief, chief digital officer for health and care appointed in, in the next few months. And that's why we're all working together to try and ensure citizens have a, a common, um, common experience of public services wherever they go and that we're joining up the seams as far as possible. Great, thank you. Tracy, you, you've got your hand up. Uh, Tracy. Hi, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now, that's fine. Hi. Um, I'd just like to highlight, again, the problems of equality impact assessments and um, disabled people. We've been highlighting a lot of problems in Torvine regarding um, COVID with access to information and um, people not being able to connect. And the emphasis does always seem to be on, um, you know, digital inclusion, but there are so many disabled people as well who aren't um, able to connect. And I think accessibility as well has to be looked at, you know, a lot of the formats that websites have and um, the whole area needs to be looked at as well. There's another level of people who can't um, join in. So um, I think that's really important. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll add to that in, in, in particular, visually impaired people. Um, and transport is, is one of the issues there that they're, they're talking about introducing, you know, more um, online visit signs and, uh, and bus information systems and all that. Well, it's fine if you're visually OK, but if you if you're visually impaired, what do you do? Um, there's a, there, there is an issue there. Do you want to comment on that, Mr. Jones? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, so I, I couldn't agree more wholeheartedly. So this is why we're and. and uh, so I was trying, I was trying to uh, get across the 
that when we're talking about digital, we're not only talking about online systems, we're talking about a way of working which goes out and talks to people and understands the barriers they face to accessing services and then providing them with services. Hope you know, there will be an online option and hopefully a great world-class online option, but also we're thinking of all those other um, barriers that people face, uh, people who can't access the internet, people who have impairments, who have accessibility issues, you know, there are there should be in place accessibility standards for public sector websites. We need people to to follow those. So I I, I can't do anything but agree more wholeheartedly. Other than say that if we introduce these ways of working and we get this culture of user focused design, we, we I genuinely think that gives us an opportunity to be able to respond to people's um, particular barriers. Um, it's what we talked about for many, many years in terms of policy interventions that we need to be understanding and giving giving options. I think digital ways of working support that and it will therefore allow people to do a much um, much more um, useful impact assessment that really gets underneath these issues and means they're putting, putting things in place as a result of those impact assessments. But thank you for the feedback, it's really helpful. Yeah, and, and Joe Galzaka makes the point that actually um moving to the uh, the social model for disability would actually help that process and i believe welsh government are committed to go down that route are they not yes ab absolutely um it's uh it, yeah absolutely we are and um yeah our permanent secretary has been pushing this very strongly with us over, over the last couple of years and yeah we're committed to following the social model and, and i completely agree with the point that it will help capture that as part of the user-centered design all right, thank you. Okay, anybody else now want to come in? No? Okay, thank you very much. Right, well, we finished a bit early, but there you go, nothing wrong with that. Does anybody else want to add anything before we um, before we break up? I think it'd be quite interesting, quite useful. There's a lot of stuff we'll capture. Jenny. Um, well, I just want to thank everyone for their contributions. I think um, that we've had some great discussions learned a lot and a lot for us to share and uh, 